Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay, real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM, and happy Halloween. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, my name is Katie. I'm playing Butch Cassidy, y'all. And that was a really sexy, spooky voice, Chris. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm Brandel. I don't like spooky scary so i'm playing daydream clear sky awesome yes. like she has so many crystals <laughs> and white dreadlocks <laughs> so yes truly caucasian satyr with locks <laughs> <laughs> i'm tisha and i'm gonna be playing fanny oakley she's coming back and that's my halloween costume Nice. And hey, I am Jonathan, and I am playing Sticky Sweet, who's going to melt in your hand and on your tongue, yeah? Oh my god. But not in my mouth? Wait. Your t- where's your tongue, bitch? <laughs> I don't know. How many tongues you got? I have three. <laughs> oh. Lesbians are weird. Well, happy Halloween, everybody. We are officially back. Roll Get Roll plays off break now. And it is Halloween, if you're listening to it, the day this is released. So we've got a little Halloween one-shot for you. But before we get into that, we have a Halloween question. And I know we just picked it, but I got to toss it to somebody else because I don't remember. What is the worst Halloween candy that you were handed or like just like thing that you were given while trick-or-treating? I once had a woman like she made us like memorize and recite a poem to her and i think she gave us like a quarter <laughs> afterwards like <laughs> how did you get a poem like pre-halloween you were given a poem to memorize no 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 you showed up at her porch unsuspecting as a child in a costume and she'd be like here's a poem like she'd have, like i think it was like a printout like it was a printout of a poem and you'd have to like memorize wait, it wait she didn't read you a poem she made you recite poetry to her <laughs> yeah, to her yes 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 yeah was it a <laughs> halloween po- poem at least i i honestly don't remember it was the worst kind of situation for a child with anxiety it was like getting homework child. <laughs> i think <laughs> that is truly unhinged yeah yeah white with fear like I can only imagine kid like looking back at their parent, their parent being like, I don't know, kid, just just recite. It's the- very Halloween yeah. though. That's it's, scary as fuck. Public speaking. It's scary <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, exactly. And then she knew exactly what she was doing. Oh Jesus. Okay. Um, I grew up in South Texas. Um, weirdly religious, so I got like Watchtower stuff. Um, Ooh, great. Yeah, oh. I mean, I got like. Um, <clears throat> there was this lady, she wouldn't allow you on her lawn, like, like up at her door. And this wasn't just Halloween. This was like all throughout the year. Like if you even walk past <laughs> her house, she would like peek out the window just to make sure that you weren't like getting close to her home. Um, and she always came out in like these hats, um, that covered her face. I, you know, it was giving very much witness protection program. So oh. she like for Halloween, she would stand like in the street in front like in this on the sidewalk in front of her home and she would hand out little bibles so that was another one so i got like watchtowers i got like little bibles and now i am a conservative christian caucasian woman so thank you lady (laughs) on the street it worked it worked another one another soldier for christ there we go oh (laughs) we had this one house that we all kind of avoided after the first couple times where it wasn't like truly awful but if you went up to it they would come out with this giant jug full of change and just like drop a handful of pennies and nickels and shit (laughs) into your bucket like they'd saved up all year to have a giant bucket of change to just toss at the kids it's so weird that's what one of mine was like pennies and nickels Pencils was another one we got. We had a lot of teachers because I lived near a lot of schools growing up. So I had a lot of teachers nearby. So pencils was a big Mm. thing we got. The worst thing I ever got for Halloween was chased by the police, though. Oh, my God. Yeah, what? Okay. And for legal reasons, this is not a true story. (laughs) Uh, It's all alleged. uh, Yeah, it's only allegedly. Uh, But a friend and I, uh, trick-or-treating, and we were, like, jumping over fences as opposed to walking on the sidewalk because it was more fun. 
Of course. And we busted this one wooden fence, like didn't clear it at all. Like we basically threw our bodies at it and took it down. And the dude <laughs> ran out and we ran. And there were flashing lights at one point. I don't know if it was for us. We were in bushes for a while. <laughs> we were very scared. Oh my God. Great. Love and that. And now you converted to, uh, yourself to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, mm -hmm. Bingo. Now, another one. Yep. Now I give up the Bibles <laughs> on Halloween. <laughs> so proud of you you open it up and there's a little flask <laughs> a lot of the houses i went to when i was younger they would have they would have bagged their own candy and stuff and there was oh, one that every year they gave out the um the circus peanuts but in their own bags like they the cheap sandwich baggies so they touch them all yeah mm -hmm. yeah so they definitely touch them all maybe they wore gloves For i sure. don't know but that was my least favorite one I do not understand the logic behind those. You have to know they're getting thrown out immediately. Circus peanuts. Yeah. What, how is that even Halloween? Why is that Halloween candy? Circus peanuts. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Y'all are going to hate this. It, it's because it grosses me out to this day, but my dad loves circus peanuts. Really? Uh, yeah. And I think like I ate one one time, like I was like eight or nine and I like, you know, projectile vomited because they're fucking nasty. <laughs> it's like. There's nothing redeeming about them now. Yeah, it's like if you went to a DMV waiting area and you cut open one of the chairs that they have you sit on and you took the, the foam <laughs> stuffing out of that chair at the DMV and stuck it in your mouth right. with a little bit of, uh, not even sugar. I don't even know what that, I don't know. Uh, we'll just call it artificial sweetener. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah, when your dad gets packages, do he just like eat the pack and peanuts? That's what it gives. It's because it's not tasty at all. I will say this too, because you brought up something, Tisha. I remember getting okay like trauma i remember like getting the shit slapped out of me as a child because um there was a bag of like clearly they touched the candy i was like five or six i don't know if y'all's parents did this but my mom every halloween she would make us sort through all of our candy to make yes. sure like nothing happened mm -hmm. to it yada yada y'all know so anyway yeah. i didn't know the drill i was also like in kindergarten and i remember like my mom slapped like my face and i think she was trying to slap the candy out of my hand because oh she saw me about to like she saw the bag and she saw me about to eat something from the bag and she's like no and then like she like cried and she was just like oh my god my baby almost died you know because <laughs> i saved your life i saved your life like you clearly have a handprint on your face but you're also not dead you're gonna remember this forever and thank me oh my god I, and i do so yeah wasn't that whole like razor blades and apples and stuff a one-time thing that happened to the guy's own kid like he put the razor blades of the apple for his own child i i have no idea i was gonna say i also don't have an idea all i remember is that like i know that if my mom caught like the hint that something looked mildly unwrapped she's just like oh throw it in the garbage as a matter of fact we have an incinerator now burn it <laughs> so yeah yeah where does yeah. this paranoia come from because sometimes like if i'm at if I get something that's like, oh, don't drink this if the thing has been cracked and I like crack it open and I don't remember if I heard the ring separate <laughs> from the cap, mm. I'm like, oh my God, now I can't drink this because I don't know if it's been opened before. And what's somebody going to do? Put cyanide in it and just like some random um, person dies of well, cyanide poisoning? Do that with Advil in the case with the seals not being done, like for jam and stuff like like. Something could have gotten in, in it, air or, and like, like bacteria, bacteria. Yeah, bet, yeah. air. It's just air. Air has the chance to get in there, and that's what feeds whatever bacterial growth. When something is just closed off in an anaerobic situation, like far less likely. Yeah, exactly. but that wasn't what my paranoia was, and it still isn't. My paranoia is that and, somebody put cyanide or yeah. fentanyl or something in my drink. It's not anything about anaerobic bacteria bacteria well, yeah okay you know the I chicago tylenol murders were a series of poisoning deaths resulting from drug tampering in chicago in 1982 um, okay that must be where um, yeah. i hate also you. as i'll say we also do get like roof eating clubs so like you do have to be smart about that yeah That's yes fair. find your drinks for sure i was saying that like you know, I hate to put my I, pay, I hate to put these people on blast. They know me. I have a family friend. Um, I'm putting you on blast. Um, where <laughs> we would like go to their house every. Well, we stopped going to their house because of this reason. But um, my mom's friend, she would make like these extravagant meals, and we would all eat and yada yada yada. But one year we came early, and my mom was helping her friend cook. What we did not know is that. Um, 
my mom's friend's grandmother would be going in and out of the kitchen, like sticking her hands in the food, tasty tasting it and not washing her hands <laughs> and not washing her fucking hands. And it was like, literally, I think all of the kids saw it like in like these people, they're like, oh, yeah, that's what she does. And like my mom's just like, I have to, like we have to go like we have to go like we can't be here this anymore. Is- this this place is not sacred. It's not holy. <laughs> so we left before <laughs> dinner was served. And like my mom just bought all the stuff at home and she like recooked dinner. It took her like six hours to make it. But my like that's been like the warning. She's just like, Okay, so if this happens at people's houses, what do you think about the people and you know and love these people, then mm-hmm. what do you think people who you don't know and love are capable of doing to you, you know? Mm. Mm. You just can't eat at everybody's house. You cannot eat at everybody's house, Lord. That's why we don't do potlucks. If it ain't store bought with like some type of seal on it, I can't have it. <laughs> there was who's that person that's like the everybody's so creative on TikTok. Everybody's so yes. creative. There was one where they let the dog lick the spoon before they went back to stirring, and it was oh my god. Barf, 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 barf. Literally, barf, barf, barf. <laughs> <laughs> and like, no offense to dogs, I'm solidly a bunny person. Dog people, dogs are disgusting. Dogs are disgusting. Yeah, who started the rumor that like their mouths are cleaner? I don't. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> I like that Katie didn't care about the dog owner's feelings, but the dog's feelings. The dog's feelings. No offense to dogs in particular. It's not their fault. It's not their Any fault. Any dogs that may be listening. <laughs> Any dogs that may be listening. Exactly. Some gay dogs are just lonely. Okay. Oh, <laughs> lonely gay dogs near your area. <laughs> for for ninety nine cents a month. <laughs> Brandel's right there. Okay. You two can adopt a gay dog. Wait, am I the gay dog? You're I'm the gay dog. You literally I'm are, you furry. <laughs> oh, probably have a collar on right now. Okay, oh, sorry. Well, oh my god, that's why. See, that's why you're here because we adopted you. You rescued well, me. Only gay kitsune, whatever in your area. Ew. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what's a kitsune? That's a fox like spirit. A- from Japan, mm. and there's a lot of like furries who are. So I'm just waiting for Brandel to be like, ooh, woo, yeah. kawaii. <laughs> Oh my god, a way to appropriate and be a deviant? I love that. <laughs> I have found my safe space. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh goodness. That was a good one. Good question, y'all. It was. Yeah. All right, now let's get into it. Legend has it that every few months, this peculiar traveling carnival called the Moonlight Park arrives in a small town and is only open at night. Among the usual attractions of cotton candy, games, and ferris wheels, there's something more sinister lurking in the shadows. An evil clown known as the Jester. This ghostly entity adorned in a tattered blood-stained suit and an eerie black and red clown mask only emerges when the moon is at its peak in the night sky. The legend goes that a seemingly ordinary roller coaster ride called the Eclipse Express is advertised to send you into a realm of pure darkness and terror. The jester's image is displayed next to the coaster's name on a large sign near the entrance. Those who ride claim the jester appears at various times on the track which takes riders through twisting and turning tunnels. What makes this legend truly chilling is the belief that those who venture onto the Eclipse Express during one of its midnight rides may never return. The Eclipse Express becomes the Jester's hunting ground, as passengers are said to vanish into thin air, leaving behind only their echoing screams. Um, yeah? Locals warn against attending the carnival during the stay, especially when the moon is full, and the Eclipse Express beckons. But every so often, curiosity or foolhardiness gets the better of someone, and they decide to test the legend for themselves. Up until last night, you four believed this to be a rumor. Last night, you came to Moonlight Park with your friend Dapple Shardlow. You played games, ate elephant ears, and rode every ride, even the Eclipse Express. While waiting in the long line for your second ride on the Cursed Coaster, the lanky ride operator announced that this is the Midnight Ride. Is any poor soul willing to ride? After a brief pause, Dapple whispers, Now's our chance to cut. He jumps out of line and charges to the front. Us, us, we'll do it. Except none of you followed. 
Dapple jumped into his seat and turned to see all of you way back in the same spot in line. After a moment, he grins and yells, No worries, guys. I'll say hi to the Jester for you. I'd never let anything happen to you anyway, because you all are my best friends. My only friends, even. God, I love you guys so much. This is the best oh night God. of my life. Oh, and I have a crush on one of you. If I survive this, maybe I'll be brave enough to tell you which one. <laughs> Dead. That is, how could he carry all those death flags at once? <laughs> oh, and he has spiky anime hair. Oh my god, he's dressed like Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! More people climb aboard and the ride takes off. After 90 seconds of whirls and screams, the car returns, but without Dapple. Uh. After a night of guilt-fueled searching, Dapple is nowhere to be found. You vowed to return and ride the midnight ride tonight in hopes of finding Dapple and avoiding the Jester's trap. Now, let's meet Dapple's best friends. Please introduce your characters. Fanny Yokely is a 5'9 human uh, wearing a cowboy hat, and she has two hand-held uh, hand bows. I'm Daydream Clear Sky, and I wear a lot of long draping clothing, lots of crystals and beads hanging from my neck. I'm like, I don't know, like a quirky 32-year-old satyr. My hair is dyed multiple colors on my legs because it's like fun. I do have two handheld crossbows, but they're more healing crossbows because the arrows are hand carved by me out of rose quartz. Mm -hmm. This is exhausting. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Butchcock Cassidy, and I'm a herringon fighter, and uh, I'm actually an arcane archer. So nice to know we have some range attacks in this uh in this whole whole party. Uh, and Butch is just, uh, modeled after my bunny Starlight, so she's got, like, a big fluffy white mullet and lots of dark eyeliner. She's got, like, an eyebrow cut, but she's also, like, really, really, really nice cowboy gear. Like, <laughs> oh, put a lot of time and effort into it. Like, spangles, fringe, embroidered flowers. Tiny little ears, though. That's yeah. why we're best friends. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I am playing Sticky Sweet, and he is a Battle Rager Dwarf Duergar Barbarian. Um, he is currently boasting a Bohemian um, maxi-length uh, black um, skirt um, with matching black tulle and a black um, tube top crop top. Mm. Um, yeah, he is that girl. He is that woman. And he is ready to slay the house down Boots Gaga. And he is going to get hit by a car while crossing the street. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name again? Sticky Sweet. Sticky Sweet. Do you shorten that to Sticky or is it the whole thing? No, it's always Oof. Sticky Sweet. <laughs> always Sticky Sweet. Sticky okay. sweet. <laughs> Can I call you Sticky? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a shame. I need to move my notes a little closer because I don't have my glasses on. Long ago, in a hostel far, far away, oh, lived God. four unknowing adventurers. Why do you have to say hostel? Oh, I don't know. In a brothel. In a brothel there far, far away. In a bathhouse. Oh, speaking of the bathhouse. In a bathtub. <laughs> at the <laughs> at the bus stop. <laughs> in a bathtub at the bus stop? Yes. I think of you all the time, especially in the morning. At the bus stop. <laughs> at the bus stop. Oh. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, welcome to Moonlight Park. As the clocks itch towards midnight, you pass through the tall front gates, the area shrouded in a thick, low-creeping fog. In the distance, unsettling noises echo through the fog, and the ground feels damp beneath your feet. The flickering, dim-lit lanterns cast shadows on the cobblestone paths. The fair looks the same as your last visit. 
The Ferris wheel's rusty spokes shriek as it turns, and the carousel's ghostly horses bob up and down to the tune of an eerie melody. Carnival Barkers invite you to play games for large stuffed prizes and magic elixirs, while a man in a top hat encourages people to attend the sideshow. The smell of fried food and pineapple permeate from a darkly painted concession stand. What do you want to do? What kind of stuffed animals? Why is it pineapple and fried food? Like, that's a real Pacific. Are they really called carnival barkers? Yeah. Yes. I thought they were called Bob Barkers. I thought they were called sex offenders. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Well, depends on which one you're talking about. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> well, I'd say we just go straight to that rod and, and see what's going on there. You know, uh, maybe that that uh, guy uh, running the ride will will know. Yeah, I've been really wanting to ride something just oh. long and scary. Yeah. Oh, I hate this so All much. All right, sticky sweet. Um, well, I, I, we shouldn't ride it yet until we until we, you know, really get out of him what we need out of him, right? Mm, but don't keep me waiting. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, Sorry. I, I get it. You really like to ride rides, but this isn't the time. Our our best buddy, uh, um, our Dapple. best buddy, <laughs> Dapple Shardlow, Dapple Shardlow is missing, and we got to get to the bottom of this. Uh, also, he has a crush on someone, so maybe it's you, and and you'll get that ride after all. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe tonight. Yeah. Whenever the clock strikes midnight 30. No, I, I think you're taking this a little bit too far. We don't <laughs> want it to be midnight 30. You could ride rides anytime after dusk. Uh, we just need to find our buddy. Daydream? Yeah. Butch? I think he's for sure dead. <laughs> <laughs> Daydream is burning sage and heading towards the nearest funnel cake stand. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, okay, yeah, let's get our provisions so that way we're full and have the mental capacity to really question this guy. Is that mm. the plan? Yeah, we're going to question him and find out all of his dirty little secrets. Man. I really don't think that we should ride the roller coaster because it seems like a death sentence. From what I've heard, not that I'm scared of anything or this ride or anything. I've I've got lots of bows, but I it's really hard to shoot bows and arrows at a roller coaster if we can discern the individual after all of this we could perhaps use these bows okay but, let's come up with a plan and uh, a daydream's already heading that way uh, okay daydream well, we're gonna follow daydream get some provisions get our our bellies full and then we're questioning that ride operator right that eclipse express ride operator yeah mm, i'm glad that none of us called the police because it has been 24 hours even in this fantasy you know how... world a cab <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay. do you know how long it will take them to run every single one of these carnies this is literally a seat of repeat offenders i don't think you can say carnies anymore but <laughs> that's something that you don't say anymore they're called carnival americans yeah and we definitely shouldn't call the police because men in uniform might distract me from my long, hard mission. No sound pleads, am I right? <laughs> Great. Uh, you can get your... What did you want? Elephant ear? Is that what you said? Cotton candy? Sorry. No, funnel cake. Funnel cake. I? I forget. What are all the provisions here? What smells like pineapple specifically? Did I say Pineapple? You did say mm -hmm. pineapple. Oh, sorry. You did say pineapple. You might have edited that out, but you definitely said pineapple. You said pineapple and fried food. Well, then there are deep fried Twinkies with a pineapple cream inside. Gross. Huh. Mm. Yeah, deep fried Oreos are also there. I've got a deep fried everything. Deep fried Snickers. Deep fried rice balls. Oh. I would like a funnel cake, but also can I get like a deep fried Twinkie and a sticker? Thank but, you. Like, yeah, who are you, like, talking to? Is there, like, some sexy specter that you're talking to right now? I'm, like, talking to the energy. Do you feel it? <laughs> yeah, it's, like, no. super electric. All right. So, uh, Sir Carnival uh, Concession Stay in person, can we get a funnel cake? And what do you want, Butch? Uh, lots of pogos, please. Uh, lots of pogos. Lots of pogos. 
a la pogos. What the fuck is a pogo? <laughs> I don't know what it is. A corn dog. Sorry. Sorry. It's called a corn dog. And I'll have a glass of your finest Metamucil. Okay. A, a glass of any kind of powdery stuff you got in there mixed with water. No. And then, on. And, and then I'll take, if you, you got those deep fried sausages with the uh, cheesy middle, mm. I'll take one of those. I think enough oil kind of acts as like a Metamucil. Like, <laughs> just, just a couple of It just fried. clogs you right the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Metamucil enough. fiber. Yeah. Yeah. The you realize that you are are ordering to a mannequin. However, there is a raven that is back in the concession stand delivering all of the food to you. It's picking up a funnel cake, dropping it in front of you, and then going and oh, getting shit. a couple pogo corn dogs, dropping it in front of you. This bird. Pogo brand corn dogs. Those pogo brand corn yep, dogs. Yeah, using its beak to type into the cash register. Look at these birds. Can I do an insight check? Sure. Are they like evil birds i got a 19 like i just these birds are just working their job like it's yeah. just a minimum wage job for these birds okay. yeah these birds are just doing their job this these is, birds are just is doing this their normal job. for this world i mean or is this weird it's 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 a, it's a little weird but i mean ravens are pretty smart i try to pay them in sparkly things like small coin oh, denominations love it what do you have i have some marbles i have some bottle caps i have paper clips Oh, yeah, it's going to take one of the marbles and just, like, throw it up in there like a bottle. Oh, oh, drop it and smack it against the counter a couple times. Um, nice. I'm going to try and... Can I talk to the raven? Sure, you can try. Mm, never more. I see someone's knocking at my door. Oh, my God. You dirty, <laughs> dirty slut. Are you going to fuck the raven? Raven, so you're delivering all these little treats to us, yeah? Hang on, we're going to see if I can make the noise of a mating call. Oh, that's a rough noise, isn't it? Ah, 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 ah. Uh, mm, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so very sexy. Um, oh. I think he's laughing at you. Ah, ah, ah. And takes another marble and knocks it onto the counter. Flicks the paperclip into the cash register. Mm. Well, I guess these ravens don't speak common. So maybe we should find someone else. Someone a little more... On our level. What time is it? It is nearing midnight, like at a quarter to midnight. How long is the line for the eclipse? Long. Like long, long, long. Long. The, the park is full. It is, it is a bustling park. Everyone wants to be here, even though everyone's a little bit scared. Just so, so just for context, like this is like Disney Park on uh halloween and people know that people just disappear on this ride like it's a traveling park so a little more like traveling carnival style than disneyland okay 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 um but because it is only here for a short time and you don't know when it's going to go away people are drawn to it right and if it travels it's really hard to like get legal action against people just disappearing on your rides exactly okay. fair enough fair enough I think maybe we should start heading towards the ride. I'd love to get a look at the ride and how it's built before we get on it. I mean, I don't think we have time. I think Daydream has, has the right, right idea. Let's head towards the ride. Did did we get our food yet? Or, uh, hey, uh, and uh, Fanny looks directly at the mannequin. Uh, hello, good sir. Uh, can we get that food post haste? Uh, we're on a mission and uh, we ain't got much time. Uh, the raven continues to deliver all the food, uh, gets some powdery metamucil and dips its beak into it to stir it up a little bit. Yeah, okay. stir it. Grabs a metal straw with its beak and throws it in there. Yeah. Is the metamucil deep fried? Oh, of course. The glass is also deep fried. It's just a deep fried tortilla shaped as a glass. Love that. Yeah. Gross. You need it afterwards. Less waste. Still made a glass, though. Aside from the metal straw. Um, yeah, you got all your food now. Uh, you are full, and uh, Sticky Sweet is staying ready. <laughs> so we're heading to the ride. Are you, like, waiting in line? Are you trying to head to the front? What are you doing? Oh, it, there's no way that I would be able to, like, while well, you guys hold in line, go check out the ride. I have an idea to get us way up to the front so if you want to go like 
check out the ride. I can check out the line. Nice. I just want to see if this thing is like mechanically sound. Not that I'm scared or anything, but I do not like being higher than my feet off the ground. And I have traumatic incidents around playgrounds and slides and jungle gyms and what is a roller coaster, if not a big jungle gym. Mm, that explains why you don't ever set up bar top seating at restaurants. That's way too high. If God wanted me to have my feet off the ground, I would have wings. <laughs> that explains why you don't reciprocate. Got it. Oh. What? <laughs> Let's just go. Yeah. Why don't you two uh, stick to sweet? Wait, are you two you... sleeping together? <laughs> I have no idea. That threw me for a loop. <laughs> Thank you, sweet. Why don't you go with the Butch Cassidy? Me and Daydream will try to clear this line a little bit so we can get up front to talk to that carnival ride operator. Mm, so we're separating the party at this scary amusement park? Yeah, but don't worry. I'm sure there's plenty of people hiding underneath and in the dark alleys near the mechanics that you can talk to. Mm, yeah, I bet they are like a lot of fun, Yeah. These are real arrows that I have sneaked in. So, please, if you need help. <laughs> I will kill someone. If you need me to. But like, sexy. <laughs> I will sexy incapacitate someone. <laughs> ah, fuck. Someone hurt my Achilles tendon. Oh, help you. I'll come help you. It's the perfect romance situation. Okay, well, like, let's separate the group and we'll go to this thing over here and, like, y'all can totally be over there, yeah? Sounds like a plan. Okay, the group separates and so do the listeners and I as we head into the gay agenda. This is The Gay Agenda, and first I get to thank our newest patrons. So thank you, Noah. Merci d'avoir les joies de Patreon, et nous sommes vraiment désolés pour l'accent de Lynn. Uh, pour mon accent, mon accent aussi. <laughs> oh no, I hope that was understandable French. It's been a minute, y'all. But I do hope your dice are rolling well for you, Noah, and you enjoy everything on our Patreon. Speaking of Patreon perks, I also have a birthday shout-out to give. And this one goes out to one of our longtime listeners and one of the biggest supporters of the show and the cast. Happy birthday, Christian. Thank you so much for being a part of Roll Gay Roleplay. And congratulations on your recent wedding. Everything looked so good from the pictures. You obviously put so much work into it, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I, I'm so happy for you. Uh, congrats on the new house, too. I, <laughs> I have a lot of things I can say to you, Christian. It was supposed to be a happy birthday, but it's a congratulations on everything that's happening for you. Also, while I'm doing birthday shoutouts, we do have a birthday in the cast. It was recently Jonathan's birthday, so happy birthday, friend. And if Jonathan's your favorite cast member, you can get them a gift by going to our website, rollgayroleplay.com. Our wish lists are all there, so you can still get Jonathan a birthday gift if you want to. And if you want to join our Patreon, go to patreon.com backslash rollgayroleplay. There's over 300 posts on there now, including bonus episodes every month for the last, I don't know, three years? And 120 some odd precosses. There's plenty more Roll Gay Roleplay on there to listen to, and it's a great way to support the show. Another great way to support the show is to leave us a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform. Wherever you're at, if you can leave us a review, it really helps us in the charts. And we've been seeing ourselves grow on the charts even while we've been on break. So while we weren't even posting episodes, we were still sitting in the charts. And that's all thanks to you. Thank you guys so much. Please keep leaving reviews. Tell your friends about us. Anything you can do to help spread the show is so helpful. And so, so appreciated. And if you get through with this episode and feel like, oh man, I want to hear more of Chris's voice. Why can't I hear more of it? You can! If you go to the Dungeon Masters Dojo podcast, I am on a four-part episode there. This may have been one of my more useful times playing a PC. And by useful, I mean I may have caused some friendly fire. But that's a hit. You know, that, that's, that counts, I think, in my book. <laughs> anyway, I had a great time playing with them, and you should go check out those episodes. Check out the four-part Halloween special at the Dungeon Masters Dojo. Now, before we get back to the show, there's a few times in this episode and the next episode where I say it's a two-part Halloween one-shot, and that was an understatement. It's three parts. It took us three recording sessions to get this done, but that's, you know, I should have known better. So yeah, you're getting three episodes of a Halloween one-shot. Now let's get back to the group doing what you should always do when people go missing. Split up. Then let's start with Butch and Sticky Sweet checking out the coaster. The roller coaster itself is fenced off. It's just a chain link fence. 
since you're probably not supposed to be going near the roller coaster, tell me how you want to get in there and what you're looking for. And we'll so do this isn't like t- typical, like, yes, because this is uh, not a theme park. This is a traveling circus. Sorry, I keep on getting them mixed up. Yes. Because in theme parks, you can usually walk through the ride while you are waiting, but that's because it's a concrete structure. But you're right. This stuff is all okay. How do the welds look on this thing? Uh, if you want to ju- jump the fence and get a closer look, I can tell you that. So the fence is climbable. Oh yeah, the fence is also. I mean, it's traveling, so everything's just set up with like. Is there? Yeah. Like, um, how tall is this fence? Because just in case we have to run out this bitch, how tall is it? It's like eight feet. Oh no! Is there a chink? I can jump. I can jump. I can jump. I can jump. Okay, but I also want to go with you. I'm a Duragar. <laughs> okay. So. Is there, like, a chink in the fence where I can, like, um, break it? Why don't you roll investigation for that? Investigation. I want to help look. Okay, go for it. Both of you can roll. I'm sorry. You said, is there a what in the fence? A chink in the fence. Okay. (laughs) I've heard that uh, expression before as well. I've only ever heard it in regards to armor, but it makes sense, I guess. I don't think I've ever heard that expression I think that refers to, like, a bend and a regular metal pattern. But yes, it is also a slur. A narrow opening or crack. A place where a patch of light can be admitted. See? I'm not problematic. (laughs) Definition two. A slur. (laughs) Right, right, right. Uh, Oh, my God. Calm down. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so um, I'm I'm, I'm rolling investigation. Yes. A natural 20... Yeah, because I got an eight. I'm sweating. I'm dressed like an outlaw. I do not like breaking the world. Like, I do not like breaking the rules. Yeah, I think Butch is, like, trying to find actual, like, touching each part of the links to see if there's some little give. And Sticky Sweet realizes that they're not even connected. And you can just, like, separate the two fences and walk in between them. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Mm, I found a lot of holes that need to be opened. And so I grab the fence and rip it apart. Awesome. You have a clear wow. opening into it, then. Now you can look at the coaster as you see fit. I'm so happy that I'm not insecure and can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, how rattly does this thing look? Or, like, the bolts? Is there, like, a sheet that says, last inspected by blah, blah, blah on this date? Or is this too ooky spooky of a carnival to have, like... Regulations? Yeah. I don't think it has regulations on it. Okay. Um, why don't you roll perception real quick? That's a 20, but that's a dirty 20. Nice. And I got a 13. Okay. Uh, I think that you would say the ride is as structurally sound as a ride that can be taken apart within a couple hours can be. Okay. Like the screws are tightened <laughs> enough. The bolts are there. No. Mm-hmm. Is there um, any, is there any like signs of like, Maybe someone has been camping out in this area, like loose cans of food or like a blanket or anything like that. Uh, There's a lot of vomit on the ground. Okay. Oh, great. Um, Yeah. Since you're under parts of the roller coaster, they have really big dips. You notice that there's (laughs) the ride is kind of painted with a clown motif. There's a lot of like black and red. There's clown faces on some of the tunnels. Me, Katie? I do not enjoy this. Is there a recurring clown picture through this motif? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. A black and red masked clown. The jester. The jester. Terrible. And with that nat 20 that Butch got, I think as you're looking around the ride and seeing all these clowns, Butch, you see at eye level, there is a clown, full clown, staring at you from about... 100 feet away and as soon as you lock eyes with it it bolts runs away i fucking hate that y'all uh can i try to hit it with an arrow you can try okay oh one second i have to equip my bows long bow it's my arcane shot only works with long bows and everyone else has a blue long bow right or a blue weapon of some kind yeah a blue weapon. Okay, perfect. Because I'm going to add blow dart. vicious blue as in, in case you need context, because I just figured out what it meant. There are different levels of um, like deadliness in D&D Beyond, green being the lowest, like a plus one. 
blue being like a plus two weapon and purple being like a plus three weapon for our listeners who don't play on D&D Beyond. Yeah, I also didn't get it initially when Jonathan asked if he could have a blue weapon. I, was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, is that like a new cool line? Is that like a new like, it's like lasers and shit? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a rare. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I did the same thing. I, was like, I don't care what color your weapon is. It's make-believe. It's make-believe. <laughs> it be fucking rainbow for all I care. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Okay, uh, is the clown within 500 feet? 150 feet. What? How much? 150. Yes, it is still within 150. I thought 100 was safe. Yeah, I have all (laughs) kinds of different levels of bows. This rabbit is absolutely covered in ranged bow weapon things. Um, So I'm going to try to hit it. Okay. And I'm not going to use arcane shot. But I am just going to fucking, ugh, a 12. 12 does not hit. So here's what happens. You see the arrow flying perfectly in the direction of the jester. And just as it's about to strike, the jester disappears. And the arrow goes right past it. Ooh. That was fucking weird. Spooky. You saw that, you saw that ghost, right? I fucking hate, I fucking hate I fucking hate clowns, and I hate ghosts, and I I really cannot deal with the fact that this may be a clown and a ghost, and I'm not going to lie, the fact that my friend disappeared, our friend disappeared, has been really freaking me out since earlier, and I think I may have just like a little meltdown while we're underneath here in the vomit. Yeah, I really think that we should go and get our friends before we have a good time with that jester. I was not having a good time. But yes, I, I, I think we've seen what we need to see. If anything's going to kill us, it's not going to be the, the structure. It's going to be that fucking clown. Well, then let's go get our friends. Or like, do you want me to go like track that jester and find out his dirty little secrets? Uh, that sounds great in theory. But I think in practice, he could eat you. <laughs> or I will be eaten while you leave. So if... You don't mind? Would you just mind holding my hand and we can walk back to the line? Um, <laughs> um <laughs> I was going to say something sexual. I was like, but no, you're like actually scared. So let's not be creepy. Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, Sticky Sweet, Sticky Sweet grabs your hand and says, um, okay, well, let's go back and let's go get our friends. And we're going to have a Christian good old time and not be creepy. Thanks, y'all. And find out where our friend went. Yeah, I really hope he's not dead. We will go back to Fanny and Daydream. Your friends just walked away to go check out the the ride itself. And you step into the entrance for the ride, the line. As you enter, the path is dimly lit, those same lanterns. There's creepy circus music playing in the background. And there's a couple of clown mannequins that line the sides of the line uh, with bleeding faces, frozen and menacing grins. Like, what the fuck, Chris? Don't worry, I like, I have a plan to get us up close. And Daydream will start burning the most obnoxious, intense mall kiosk incense just creating a cloud of olfactory fatigue. Interesting. Trying to get people to, like, choose to leave. Let's roll. Oh, if anyone's pressed a digitation, you can make a bad smell, too. I don't have that spell, Katie. Well, I'm saying if someone else does. No, Fanny gets what's what what uh, they're trying to do if it doesn't work they have a backup plan that's a third level spell so let's do a man i don't know what this would be i guess performance is probably the best choice oh love that choice is it music dance acting storytelling entertainment maybe not okay well let's choose something else then (laughs) (laughs) you get (laughs) I did just roll in that one with performance, so if you would like to choose something else, I'm totally fine with that. I was really super chill with it. I do have a plus six, so I'm a little mad about that, but that's fine. It's rough. 
help me out with what this would be then. If not performance, then what? I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to be performance. I guess it would actually be more like saving throws. I think it might part, be, yeah, con yeah. saves. Okay, let's just roll some d20s. Is it an enclosed space? The queue? Yeah. I mean, it's like roped. So no. It, there's no covering up top? No, no, it's not. There's no cover. Everyone's got the little jackets on because it's a little chilly. No. Oh. Plus, it's nice. Are they themed to the carnival? Do they have, like, merch? What does the carnival's oh. hoodies look like? Oh, yeah. It says Moonlight Park on it with a little, like, uh, graphic font. It's got a moon going over the top of it. Eerie clouds mm-hmm. in it. I'm sure this says I survived the midnight ride. Yeah, it's little Jester stuffies. Jester nutcrackers. They're carrying around nutcrackers? I hate this. I have a really good story to tell for the next part of this episode about me going to, like, a haunted farm kind of thing. <laughs> being a little pussy bitch. So, like... <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're putting you through it all over again. Yeah. So, it clears some people. The people closest to you are kind of annoyed, and they'll leave, but there's still a long line ahead of you. Uh, but you'll see the people that you annoyed with your scent. They'll, like, go underneath the rope, and they'll walk back down through the uh, wheelchair user accessible lane. How long is the line? Like, 20 feet? 30 feet? 10 feet? 100 feet. 7 feet? I, I mean, you're probably going to be waiting in line for about 20 minutes. How long I mean, is the ride? I mean, it also, like, wraps. Uh, the ride's 90 seconds long. Okay. I'm not surprised this didn't work very well. Usually when I do it, other people don't leave. I'm asked to leave. Well, um, maybe I got an idea. See how this line is all wrapped and stuff? Well, I can just say, Hey, does anybody mind if we cut in front of them because uh, we need to talk to this guy? And then I just cast silence on them. You know, it's a, a 40-foot sphere, so it's a 20-foot radius, so uh, that should work just fine since it's wrapped. It's a wrapped line, like Christopher said. Yeah, we could totally tell them we have, like, a friend at the front. Yeah, and, and if we say, hey, anybody speak up or forever hold your peace, you know, uh, in their silence, it's not like they can say anything. That's true. And then we can get married at the front. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, marriage is like the, the saddle of a, of a friendship, you know? It holds us up. It right. keeps us in place. Right. We know exactly where to sit. A, the wrapped line of the heart is what they always say. Yeah, that's what I heard. And now I won't be bringing any spurs out, but if you want to later, I, I'm down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Sticky. <laughs> Also, don't tell Sticky I call them Sticky. (laughs) Sticky. (laughs) So, Fanny casts Silence. No sound. And they're standing off to the side. Fanny and uh, Daydream, Clear Sky. And she casts Silence on the line. Okay. She wants to try to make sure that she doesn't get the carnival ride operator. So, maybe there's like two or three people up front by the ride operator that she doesn't get. Sure. But... Any creature or object entirely in the sphere is immune. Well, they're immune to thunder damage, but no sound can be created. No sound can be created within or passed through that sphere. So nobody, nobody's going to hear them. So the carnival ride operator won't hear them. So we'll just walk up. Okay. Hey, does anybody mind if we get up there real quick? Uh, no big deal. It's just going to real quick. Uh, we might not even ride. I don't know. Um, but, uh, me and, okay, those two people over there too. So, uh, say, say now or forever hold your peace and we're going to go up there. All right. Hey, you heard him, Mr. Carnival of Ride Operator Man. We're coming up there. They don't care. Carnival <laughs> <laughs> Home Operator Man. Why don't you two roll perception real quick as we're doing that? Okay. I got a 24. 11. Fanny, you are marching forward. Damn it. We're getting to the front of this line. As you're walking, daydream, you turn to see where your friends are, and they're approaching from the back. You kind of wave them up, and you look into the crowd of silent people, and you lock eyes on one particular person who's pointing. (sighs) As you turn to follow their wide eyes, you just took another clown statue, like all the other ones that are along the line. 
except this one ducks down and looks you straight in the face before disappearing. Uh, do I have to make some sort of like save or that's just a thing that happened? It's just a thing that happened. You saw it, it was right next to you, and now the jester is gone. I'm going to assume that it's just like a leftover hallucination from the ayahuasca trial I did underneath the roller coaster earlier, which mm. is where I vomited <laughs> a lot. Yeah, yeah. Could be. Uh, at this point, we'll let Sticky Sweet and Butch catch up with you. So all four of you together and are heading to the front of the line where you see a ride operator. Same guy that was there last night, actually. Uh, he's a tall, wiry man with almost translucent skin. Uh, he's got blue eyes that almost seem to glow and jet black hair that's slicked back. Uh, he's also wearing a name tag that says Dictor. Okay. Wall. I barely know her. Mm. Dictor. Oh my god. Trans masks? Steal that name. <laughs> drag kings? <laughs> Did I tell you there's a drag king in my city that sings Michael Bublé? And it's just really hard to see people live your dreams. <laughs> I think you did tell us that. I you know. Like, I I've can never in... do drag now because. I'm silly jealous. And someone stole my idea. And because I've been sitting on it for years, insecure about it, it does not mean that's not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I never told anyone ever. Um, is there anything you wanted to talk to Dictor about? Or you wanted to say something to him or what's up? I put a hand on Dictor's shoulder and then I just close my eyes and nod and hand them a quartz crystal. Okay, he's a little taken aback that someone's touching him, but he'll take your quartz crystal. What? 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 Hi? And then just walk onto the room. Um, yeah, good sir. Uh, our friend is missing, and, and this is a bribe for you. Oh, your friend went missing on the ride? Yes, he did. Uh, and I know you have to know more than you're saying. Is this a real thing that people just go missing? Who's, who's taking these people? Okay, there's no, the like... Jester. That's not a thing. The jester got him. Oh, really? Did the jester really get him? Yep, yep. That's, that's... I guess insight? Sure, go ahead. And I would also like to roll insight as well. I got a nine. Are we all together again now? Yes. Yeah, you're okay. all four of you there. Girl, I rolled an eight. I rolled a 14. <laughs> I was not proud of that. Then for all you know, he's telling the truth, yes. Okay, we just bribed you with this fancy crystal. This crystal is worth more than, uh, you know, an unborn baby, okay, in, in Texas. Uh-huh. So. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't bribe you. I bribed your soul. Okay. Ah, I, I, my soul unfortunately belongs to the carnival at this point. But, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It's the jester that takes people. That's how it's always been. All right, where did you take him to? Oh, that's not my business. I'm supposed to just make sure the ride operates. And the owners and operators are aware of this situation, and they are not <laughs> Katie. doing anything about it. We warn people not to ride the ride. The jester will take them. But if people want to ride, jester's got to eat. Yeah. Damn, I need to know who your lawyers are, because that's an insane indemnity clause. I just assume he eats and we never see any bodies or anything, so. Probably. Oh, just bones and all. So, your first assumption is that he eats them? Well, I mean, what else does he do with them? Uh, there are better options. He's keeping them kidnapped in a basement somewhere. Like, is that better? Is that worse? Maybe. I don't. I don't know what the jester does. And he'll uh, look help? at his watch and he'll go, It's about that time now. Hang on one second. The cart will arrive. People will get off, and he'll step in front of it, and looks into the crowd and says, This is the midnight ride. Any poor soul willing to ride? It's still silent, right? It is still silent, uh, except for one person in the front who makes a big spectacle of volunteering. He uh, jumps out of line and runs down the path next to the line, Uh, with a phone on a gimbal recording himself the whole time. Uh, He's like, what's up, y'all? This is Riz, you know, Riz Soja Beef. Here, gonna ride this ride. Riz is wearing an orange button-up with only the two lowest buttons fastened and tan shorts that stop just above his knees. Great, love that. Hot. Uh Uh-huh. Like, you know, no ride's not going to take me. I'm going to beat this jester. I'm going to take you on the whole journey. We're going to live stream the whole thing. All right, here we go. And he starts high-fiving the people in the silence thing, but no one's actually high-fiving him back. He's just trying. 
Mm. I'll hold my hand up to high five him. Are we really far away? Awesome. He'll high five you. I think yes. I should. we should go on the ride with this one. If anything, we can at least have some content for our only dragons. Okay, great. Yes. Great. Riz will jump into one of the cars. Uh, and he'll like run his hands through his curls on his head, just start making faces to the camera, little kissy faces. Death. How many people per car? Uh, there's ten seats total. Two people per car. Um, I walk up to Riz and I say, mm, "Any space for me, Daddy?" Yes. In fact, I need all of you to roll a D10 if you choose to ride the ride. D10. What seat did um, our buddy ride in? Ah, that's a good question. I got a one. I got a six. Hey, do we remember what seat uh, uh, Dapple Shardlo? What? I can't read yeah, my own writing. Uh-huh. Dapple Shard Shardlo? Yeah, that's it. You got it. You guys were really close, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why that's such a... It's a hard name to remember for me for some reason. We will let you roll insight or history on that. Um, let's see. So Daydream got a one. Ugh, Twelve on history. Hey, do any of you guys remember what seat Dapple Shard- Shardlow was sitting in when he went disappeared? I got a nine for the D10 roll. Okay. And a 16. I got a 21. A 17. Okay. I also oh. got a nine for the D10. I can re-roll. Okay, that time I got a two. You believe... Well, I think, Fanny, you have some trouble remembering where Dapple sat, but Daydream is certain Dapple sat in the uh, middle car. What number would... Uh, does that per- does that mean a number? Uh, those would be five or six. Yeah. Oh, I rolled six! Mm, tell Dapple we said hi. Take me, Daddy. Yeah, take me. <laughs> oh, with the influencer. No, okay, wait. So, yeah, so Riz is sitting at five... Riz. I thought you said Ridge. Yes, Riz Soja Beef. Riz Soja? Yeah, S-O-J-A-B-E-E-F. That's too much. Soja Beef, tell. Are there usernames on social like Riz Soja Beef, or is it like Riz Soja Beef 1? Because uh. someone else has that fucking name. Ew. Right, or like the real Riz. 69420. The real nice. Riz. Love that. There's no way. If the regular one was taken, there's no way 69420 is free. <laughs> I think it's Soja Beef, but it's with a PH. The five of you are in. Daydream and Fanny are sitting in the front together. Riz and Sticky Sweet are sitting in the middle. And Butch, you are in the back alone for right now. Oh, God. The ride operator will look at you. Three. Three more people will walk on to the ride in front of you katie and behind sugar sweet and riz there's a woman with a long victorian dress and dark black hair uh, that slides in along with the man in the top hat that was shouting at everyone from the slide side show as he walks in you realize he's much shorter than you thought he was uh, from where he was standing And a young girl with a bloody vintage nightgown approaches the coaster, walking on her fingers and toes. God, Christopher! No one thinks that's a problem? The ring lady? Pretty similar. She bends her body into the car, sits right next to Butch Cassidy, and giggles, and hugs a small doll. Bad. Terrible. The worst. (laughs) (laughs) The operator walks by and checks that everybody's restraints are in order. He then walks over and puts one hand on the controls for the coaster and gets into a running stance. He hits the button and then sprints into the open seat, and the coaster jolts to life, immediately plunging you into darkness. The initial drop is steep, and you feel your heart pounding as you take a sharp turn. Everybody roll perception. I feel like my character is disadvantaged because they are shitting themselves. That's fair. Because I just rolled a nat 20, and I don't feel like that is accurate, even though I have proficiency. Or do those just cancel each other out? Do proficiency and disadvantage cancel each other out? 
A proficiency yes. is an added no, bonus. No proficiency. Yeah. Advantage and disadvantage cancel. I okay. also rolled a natural 20. Nice. Okay. That's two nat 20s in a row. That's wow. two nat nice. 20s in a row. So I am I am so scared. I have a like limit list. I have limit list. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm accessing L pieces of information coming into my brain at once. Not blinking at all. Exactly. Okay. As you twist and turn through the blackness, sudden bursts of neon lights illuminate grotesque clown figures. Their maniacal smiles and laughter echoing in your ears. What's it sound like? <laughs> oh my god. I've got my lowest perception. Daydream. Yeah, Daydream's distracted because they're using their previously burnt sage to kind of draw protection sigils on the front of the car. Oh, very nice. Uh, of course, each coaster or each car coaster has the jester's face adorning it. And as you're doing that, I think one of your pieces of sage just flies out of your hand because the coaster's going so fast. Oh, no. And as you turn back to look, you see sitting just behind Sticky Sweet looks to be the jester. Mm. And as you go through a dark tunnel and you keep looking back, it disappears. Hey, Sticky, did you... Did the... Did the jester get on behind you? Mm, I don't know, but I wish he was behind me and give me a little surprise. I'm so sorry I asked you any questions. Oh, yeah. You're not hearing each other on this ride anyway. (laughs) Okay, great. (laughs) We can't just have a calm conversation on this roller coaster. Yeah, right. Just as you are certain you saw the jester appear and disappear, the on-ride camera flashes. The track takes you through tight loops and a corkscrew turn, leaving everybody disoriented and breathless. The air is filled with the scent of cotton candy, which is a stark contrast, making it even more nightmarish. Not pineapple? Not pineapple. Cotton candy pineapple. (laughs) It's flavored. Finally, the coaster screeches to a halt, leaving you trembling and relieved to be back in the eerie clown-themed station. As you exit, you can't shake the feeling that you've just survived a chilling journey through the Circus of Nightmares. That's when you notice one person is missing. Unfortunately, Sticky Sweet did not make it out of the ride. Oh my god! No, I've been abducted by this evil (laughs) jester. (laughs) Oh my god. you guys still like Uh... Wait, didn't you say the echoed screams of people who disappeared stick around? Yes. What did Sticky's echo scream sound like? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we love consent. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Well, uh, unfortunately, that was the, the end of that fun act. Instead, you get to now play Riz Soldier Beef. Okay. Oh, great. Oh, God. Yeah, it's your boy, Riz Soju Beef. And I got my handy dandy device that I use to make videos (laughs) and connect with my audience. Because I'm an influencer. Deuces. Okay, we don't (laughs) care about that right now. All right, our buddy's missing. That's the second buddy in a row on the second night in a row on this damn ride. Uh, We're. we're... What? Well, I got my handy dandy device that I use to connect with my audience. What if we look through my phone that I'm using and we see if I got it on video man that'd be some wicked good stuff to put on my influencer pages yeah we'll get to that buddy um we just really need to uh, I guess reconvene you know hey Uh, hey uh, hey, come watch the video come watch the video can I start the video sure oh my god is this guy are you are you okay are you okay butch are you okay uh Sundance kid uh daydream <laughs> daydream clear sky yeah i was like just talking to sticky on the coaster i couldn't hear them but i could feel them right i am scared out of my goddamn mind you hear it <laughs> yeah <laughs> from like <laughs> okay great do i see anything about sticky being abducted in the video that i took so with where you were at you do have sticky in a lot of your footage um but every dark tunnel seems to be just purely dark so as the ride's going through, there's about 60 seconds into it, uh, the seat next to you just becomes empty. 
Uh, there's a lot of clowns that you see on the video. It's hard to discern what is a what's an animatronic thing, what's a painting, and what might be real. But Sticky definitely disappeared about two thirds of the way through. Just after the photo was taken, is what it seems. You see some flashing lights that'll tell you that. So then I tell them, I'm like, yeah. So right whenever the photo light took, that's whenever your friend Sticky Sticky Icky. That's whenever he uh disappeared or whatever. <laughs> So maybe if we go back through there, we can like find something, you know, and save your friend. And then this would be like really good content for my influencer pages. What in tarnation were you thinking bringing a camera that doesn't have night vision on it? Well, I thought that this wasn't a real thing. So like, I didn't think that people really died. I thought that like people were just like being paranoid, you know, using it for good content. So you were just like, so you were just like, okay, it's midnight. I'm going on a roller coaster that goes through dark tunnels. I'm not going to put night vision on my hey. camera. Can you just not afford it? Or, or oh, what's hey, going on? you're really giving me the ninth degree, but remember that, you know, your boss just gave me this person to play right now, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Deuces! <laughs> can we see follower count on the video? for? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see this. There's like a... I'd say there's actually a lot. I think Riz is a real influencer, just an obnoxious one. Just really, yeah. Great. Like a Mr. Beast. Mr. Beef. Deidre wants to check out the cart. Like, did Sticky leave any blood or gross stains oh yeah you can investigate the car before anyone gets into it the carnival staff that joined you on there will just kind of meander off and go back to their posts all of them seem unfazed by the recent disappearance i got a 17 investigation okay looks like nothing's left behind no blood i mean the seat might the the seat might be a little sticky but gross that's expected daydream doesn't feel like an aura blue blue (laughs) love that blue (laughs) All right, what are we going to do, you guys? I mean, we can see from this uh, really terrible video that had no forethought uh, put into it whatsoever uh, that around this time in the ride is when he went missing. Can we, like, jump on the ride? Is, is there any way we can get that carnival operator, ride operator guy to stop it at that point so we can jump off and try to find our friends? I really don't think that we should ride the ride again, or if we do, that we should all sit together and form a ring of protection. Like hold hands or something? What What is this? No, like knives. Yeah, I would actually <laughs> really love ring of protection, to hold hands. But it's just knives. <laughs> but it's just knives. <laughs> uh, Daydream's going to approach the ride operator and cast command and say, shut down. Like, to, to close the ride. Oh, okay. That's a saving throw, right? Yes. Oh, well, we'll say he failed it then. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. Yeah, nine. Then nothing. Okay. I guess he... Uh, then he will, uh, just before ushering people back into the ride, he will hit the big red stop button. You'll hear an ah! alarm go off, and the ride will be halted. Okay, I think it's safe for us to go walk around the tracks now. All right. Uh, pretty boy, you're coming with us. And and by the way, if you're going to keep your shirt unbuttoned that far, you might as well show some nipple. <laughs> and Fanny pulls his shirt to the side and then grabs his arm and pulls him with us. Free the nip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Uh, you're off to investigate the roller coaster walking the tracks. Is that what we're doing? Tubular. Yeah, it seems like so. a great idea. That's totally how roller coasters work. Well, there's like stairs and stuff. We'll let there be a a path. It's rinkety. It's 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 not great. Before we go into any further investigation, we're gonna have to find out what happened to Sticky Sweet on the next episode of Roll Gay Roleplay. <sighs> Chris. Yeah. So we're back. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the show. Until next time, I'm Chris the DM. You can find me on all social media at Chris Drinks Lemonade. I'm Tisha. You can find me on Instagram at the number one Tish, the number one. I'm Brandon, and you can find me in Apple Podcast Reviews. If you leave a five star, I'll show up behind you looking at your computer screen. Oh my god, like the Duolingo owl. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Katie, and as per the most recent Facebook rules, I'm not allowed to share links to my social media. 
And I'm Jonathan, and you can find me on only Dungeons, Daddies, and Dragons. That's a different podcast. So, you should, like, look at my content, yeah? Sexy, sexy. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye! Toodles! Bye! Bye. An RGRP LLC production. Music by Joe Barsanti.